gentlemen today we're back again for another video in today's video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make some wind effects and some shock waves just like how you see on the screen now so just so we have a blank slate we're gonna go ahead and delete these two and just so you guys kind of understand the difference between the two and how they work so just like in my video before we're gonna set the size to one by one by one with a transparency of 0.8 you guys haven't seen my la my latest video go ahead and check it out uh, just so you guys have already learned a couple of techniques along the way as as well as some of the ones that I'm gonna be teaching you in this video as well so inside of our parts let's set up an attachment and a particle emitter now starting off we're gonna be making our wind so wind is something that can be a little bit tricky because as you guys know we can't actually see wind so the wind effects that you add inside of your game or as a practice is kind of up to your imagination. But generally speaking, we kind of have an idea of what most styles do as far as making wind effects. So uh, to start off, go ahead and get yourself a nice crescent shape. Pause if you need to, if you need to go find one. But just so you guys know what a crescent is, a crescent is a not a full circle but it is a nice kind of slash looking um, little PNG that you can use. And we're just gonna go ahead and use this one here. And I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and grab yours before we get started. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and set our light influence and light emission to zero. And that's all we pretty much have to do with color for now. You can practice with colors afterwards, but just for the sake of this video, we're not going to be using colors in this one. So from here, we're going to set our orientation to velocity perpendicular. So basically, the PNG is going to be facing straight up. And we don't really have to worry about much else when it comes to the appearance. We're going to go ahead and come down to emission and get all of this set up before we make all the tiny tweaks. So light time, we're going to go ahead and set to 1. Our speed is going to be 0 0.001. This is the lowest speed in Roblox Studio that I've been able to set a particle to. Now, this is almost perfect because it's slow enough to where, visually speaking, you're not going to be even noticing that it's moving. So, if we get like a nice little close-up of this, you can see that that particle is not moving at all. So, this comes in pretty handy whenever you're trying to make something that spins and twists and explodes, and you really don't want it to move. So, our spread angle is going to be a 5, negative 5, just to give it that little bit of extra thickness. Now, typically, you can do this with just speed, but then it's just going to flow up in a straight line and look a little silly. So, with this, it adds a little bit of randomness to it, and it gives it a little bit of a twist and turn. Now, our rate, we're going to set to 10, and our rotation, we're going to set to 360 by negative 360. So, now we kind of have just a circle that kind of rotates on its own. Now, we really want it to kind of swirl and spin and make it look like a nice little wind effect. So rotation speed, we're going to set a 500 by negative 500. And you can see that we're already getting that nice little spin effect. So rotation speed is something that's a little bit weird in Roblox Studio. And if you have to use a ridiculously high number to get what you're looking for, you might as well just go for that ridiculously high number. Typically on rotation speed, anything under, let's say, 250 is probably really, really slow. And with wind, depending on what you're trying to portray on your VFX, it can help to have slower ones, but it also looks just as nice if you make them move really quickly. So now we're going to go ahead and get the size. So instead of using my plugin, we're just going to go ahead and use... Uh, just this one as a representation. You can kind of play around with it if you need to. So as you can see here, we got a nice little twisty and turny spin effect on it, and it's not doing anything too fancy, and it doesn't quite look like wind because it's not transparent enough. So we're gonna make it almost transparent fully by putting it right about here. So as you can see, it already looks pretty nice as a wind effect, but it doesn't really have that thickness that you would probably want. So go ahead and duplicate that and 
we are going to change this other one to a completely different texture. So there we go. So we have a fresh new texture. You can already see it adds another layer of detail. Now you could almost do this as much as you really wanted, depending on how detailed you wanted your wind effect to look. It doesn't really matter how many of these you put in, it's still going to look like wind at the end of the day. And all you'd have to do if you want to add multiple layers is just make that transparency a little bit more. And you can see that we have several different clips and burns and stuff inside of it. So we're just going to narrow this down to two so we don't have too many of them. just enough transparency and uh, let's say we wanted to start adding color to it so we'll just go with a red and black so we'll change this one to red and we'll change this one to black now let's say if you're going for something more anime typically they have thicker lines to them so all you'd have to do is just edit that transparency a bit and if you wanted to add those even more all you'd have to do is change that rate and it looks nice and pretty now the speed if you really wanted it to move you can set it to a speed range which would be like a 1 comma 5 range for example so that means that some of them are moving at 1 speed and some of them are moving at 5 speed or 4 or 3 or even 2 so anything within a 1 to 5 range their speeds will be adjusted so you can see some of them are moving pretty quickly, so they're probably a 4 or 5, and some of them aren't even moving at all, so you can say that they're a 1 or a 2. So that's also a nice little trick you can do, is you can set a speed range. Even if you wanted to have a negative one, you could set a 5 to negative 5, and they would move in opposite directions from each other. So some of them are going up at a speed between negative 5, or technically they'd be moving at a speed of 1 to 5, and some of them are moving at a speed of negative 1 to negative 5. So this is also a nice little trick you can do with speed as well. And I'm just going to rotate this so you guys can kind of see it. So there you have it. A nice little touch you can add to your wind effect, and can be pretty helpful depending on what type of effect you're going for. So now that we have wind done, we're going to go ahead and go over here and start our shock wave. So shock waves are typically a little bit tricky to do, and they take a lot of tweaking. And let's just say no shock wave within Roblox is ever extremely perfect, because, like I said, shock waves and winds isn't necessarily something you want to see. So just like our winds, we're gonna set our light influence to zero. We're gonna set our light time to about a one, and just for this we're going to set it to about a 15. Now shockwaves kind of depend on what type of images you're using. Nothing is ever extremely perfect but like I said it takes a lot of fine tweaking and you can almost turn any image into what you need it to be. So for the sake of this video I'm going to be slapping in a random circle that we have that looks somewhat decent. And for speed 0, zero, zero 1 like this to keep it from moving and all of this is dependent on size. Now the size that Roblox typically maxes out at isn't something that really portrays impact very well. So we're going to be using uh, our plugin here VFX Suite and if you really needed to have a scaling tool that would help you out you can also use uh, Lunar, Lunar VFX. It is pretty helpful and just in case you needed to find any of these, go ahead and hit View, Toolbox, and then in the Creator Store, you're going to go to Plugins, and type VFX. So in here are the typical ones that you would see. So we obviously have VFX Suite and VFX Editor. Both of these are very, very good, except for VFX Editor is basically like a plugin for the Properties. So it's not necessarily needed, but in case you wanted to use it, it's very helpful. But as you can see here, we have PVFX, which is another one I can recommend that's free, and Lunar VFX, which is this one right here that you see on the screen, 
And they also have their own list of VFX textures that you can use. They, although they may not have the best textures you can find, it is pretty helpful. And this is something that can help you out with their scale tool, just in case something's a little bit too small for your taste. So, from here, uh, we're going to go ahead and turn our particle back on. Alright, now our rotation. We're just going to set it a 360 by 360, just to give it that nice little interesting effect. And then our spread angle is also going to be 360 by negative 360. And then it's our orientation, we're going to set to velocity perpendicular. And as you can see, it's already kind of starting to look like impact. Now, notice the key difference already between this and the wind, is that the wind is something that naturally rotates. Now, for your impacts, impacts don't really rotate. But if you wanted to add a little bit, I wouldn't recommend going over something like 100, just because it's you don't really want the rotation to be noticeable. So from here, we're going to go ahead and adjust that transparency and make it look like it's almost invisible. So at this point, you would be looking at what would a simple impact look like. But we're going to go ahead and duplicate that, and we're going to find an impact frame. So an impact frame, well, I guess I shouldn't say impact frame, but impact PNG would be, would be something like these. Uh, it looks like, you know, what we would envision an impact would look like. So from here, we're just going to go ahead and add one of these images in. And as you can see, it already adds another extra layer of detail. Now, just like wind, we can keep adding until we really had the detail that we wanted. So we'll just use this as an example. So let's say we wanted these to be black, this one to be black, and this one to be red. So you can already see that it has a nice level of detail, and obviously this isn't something entirely goes into an impact, but you can see that it adds a nice little touch to it, just with all the different types of lines and curvature that we have in here. But typically when you're working with impact, it's something that requires a lot more finesse, and definitely requires a lot of tweaking and tuning, and unfortunately, a lot of different images. But typically on a general basis, this is what you would be looking at as far as um, looking at a basic type of wind effect or a spiraling effect, and this is what it typically looks like as a general impact effect or a shockwave. So go ahead and use these techniques out and play around with them and even put them together with other things if you're curious on how they work. And we'll definitely start getting into the more advanced stuff here pretty soon. But the next couple of videos I have planned out are going to go over some more techniques that you guys can use in your VFX. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informational. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.